Hey everyone, I'm Jeff and today I'm going to be talking about all the films that I watched in August 2017. Now, August was a really good month for movies. I watched five in total. Five of them were really good and I thoroughly enjoyed them. And one of them was mm, debatable at best. Frankly, it might have actually been a bad film. But I'll leave that to your judgement. I'm still undecided about it. Anyway, without further delay, I'll get started into the first film. Which was Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. This stars Dane Dehan, Cara Delevingne, and is directed by Luc Besson. Luc Besson is most well known probably for The Fifth Element, of which this definitely is familiar to, if you like that film, which obviously I do. And is also responsible for Leon, amongst quite a few other films. Now this is a grand scale uh, space opera of a film essentially. And I loved it. Now I watched it in 3D, 4DX. So I watched it with the 3D glasses on. And the 4DX part is where you have the moving seats. You've got a fog machine down the front of the cinema. You've got uh, these sort of air uh, blaster things behind your head here. Which, that, actually that's the only part that I didn't like. Because they were quite loud. And the, and the man of hearing go peculiar. Anyway. and But that part of it worked really well. And I'll get onto that in a minute. Overall, I loved this film. Now, the idea of the film and the premise of the film is a bit fiddly to say, frankly, without giving away plot spoilers. And as you know, I don't like giving away spoilers for books or films. So, suppose to say, there is a giant base station, essentially, from Earth. It's been moving away from Earth for uh, centuries now, and it's been growing bigger and bigger as bits have just been added onto it over the Earth. And the plot revolves around this space station and some unusual events that go on right in the centre of it and this other civilization that nobody is sure if it exists or not frankly I can't say too much more but it's an interesting plot and if you watch The Fifth Element you'll be kind of used to the idea of it because it's sort of that kind of style you know you've got alien races all over the place you've got humans mixed in you've got alien races mixed in with every other alien race so it's it really is a multicultural um, film what with aliens instead, instead of you know, uh, Earth-like cultures and it works well because of it I think. All the action scenes are done extremely well, the quiet uh, contemplative moments are done extremely well and frankly the film is just extremely well made and I really did enjoy this especially on the whole 4DX uh, aspect of it because that really did work well. I got the impression that they were thinking of the 4DX aspect of it whilst actually on set and filming it rather than thinking, man, I've filmed Valeria, now we should add some um, 4DX elements, you know, and figure out when to move the seats and such. If that, this didn't, this felt like a suit, they're actually thinking of it whilst filming and indeed even could have been vaguely influenced by it at points. Obviously I can't say for sure, but that's my impression. But I would really recommend this film if you can still watch it, it should still be on cinemas. Uh, now, depending on where you live, of course, because obviously, you know, films are released drastically different times in different countries. But I really did enjoy this film, and it's a really good Luke Besson film. And as being one I've been wanting to watch for a long time, I never obviously saw The Fifth Element in the cinema because well, I was by too young. And so this is kind of me being able to see something like The Fifth Element at the cinema, finally. Next up, I watch Atomic Blonde. I watched this in 2D 4D, so it had all the moving seats and stuff, but I didn't have to wear the horrible 3D glasses. And for the record, I hate them 3D glasses, man. I find them extremely uncomfortable. They tend to feel like they're going to cut my ears off after about an hour. Anyway, uh, Atomic Blonde stars Charlie's Theron, James McAvoy, and it is directed by David Leach. Now, this is set just before and during the fall of the Berlin Wall in Germany obviously and it is quite an interesting film and one that I really did enjoy it's obviously a sort of a sort of spy film with action elements of course but Charlie's Fraud is a sort of spy of sorts who is sent over to Berlin to find out certain information from a defector and basically get him from one side of Berlin to another across the wall and obviously this is more complex than it seems and there are some interesting twists and turns 
obviously been a boy action film and it was really well well made all the characters played their roles extremely well and what another role that was really done really well as well was Sophia Butala who played a very significant supporting role and yet again is another role where I've watched Sophia Butala in but I thought basically she stole every scene that she was in frankly she's done this now three times now in the last few years so she's someone that I'm now quite keen to sort of keep track of what she's in because she seems to be um, doing extremely good roles overall the film was extremely good as I've said it was it had some complex moments in it had some very sort of silly moments in it did have comedy in at times but it also had some serious dark moments and it was just extremely well made and I just really did enjoy it because it was just it was just cleverly made actually in points which I haven't heard many people say that but I personally think it was because it wasn't as straightforward as what it seems to be it seems to be something obvious with the concept and it kind of is in a way but not entirely it does do a few interesting things with it and that I'm grateful for the third film that I watched was The Hitman Bodyguard this stars Ryan Reynolds Samuel L. Jackson and is directed by Patrick Hughes now the premise of this film is quite simple relatively speaking there is a nasty evil dictator of a European country he has committed war crimes he has been arrested and now he's in trial uh, in The Hague for war crimes and crimes against humanity now the only person that they can find to actually testify against him and that they think might not actually immediately be assassinated by him or his henchmen is Samuel L. Jackson who is the hitman of the title however to get Samuel L. Jackson to the hike because he's in Manchester at the start of the film Manchester England requires well some pretty heavy protection and indeed that is where the bodyguard comes in who is Ryan Reynolds and that's all you really need to know basically it's a sort of a it's a sort of um a buddy film of, of sorts across England and then across a part of Europe to the Hague and it's just really fun I didn't entirely know what to expect from this film I knew it would be fairly fun but I didn't realize how fun it would actually be because frankly the impression that I got all the way through watching the film was that Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson was basically having the time of their life filming this you know they were probably uh, laughing and joking around and playing jokes on one another constantly I would assume that they probably ended up having to film every scene multiple times because they were probably uh, being so stupid and being so um, ridiculous you know playing jokes on one another that they probably ended up messing up scenes constantly and having to refilm them and actually you know so, so they were fairly serious well although some of the scenes were very silly and really were funny because this has got darker moments again it's got brilliant action scenes but interspersed with that really well and mixed with it is the comedy because it's their relationship between Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson they they sort of bounce off each other really well and yes they both do their own parts individually well but when they're together and you've got Ryan Reynolds trying to be this sort of serious um, professional bodyguard and then you've got Samuel L. Jackson as this fairly sort of cavalier hitman who knows he's really good and as a result he can be quite quite sort of you know sort of trivial about things and sort of laugh and joke all the time that works together well and creates a really interesting dynamic and frankly I loved this film I really did because it was just so fun I think I would really would recommend this film to people because of how fun it is if nothing else because it was just fantastic it really was the fourth film that I watched was The Dark Tower. This stars Idris Elba, Matthew McConaughey, and is directed by Nikolai Arcel. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Now this is based on the Stephen King um, novel, well actually Stephen King series of seven novels which starts with The Gunslinger and indeed it is The Gunslinger that Idris Elba plays. Now this is a long complex series written over more than two decades I like the books I don't love the books and frankly the film was very debatable in quality because frankly you've got 
a massive amount of source material being seven books and multiple thousands of words and you've got a one hour 35 minute film I don't know why they had to make it so short for this film could have easily been you know, a good 2 hours 15 minutes or something or 2 hours 20 and they could have fitted in more into the film and basically extended the plot including more from the books because basically that is what this film suffers from it has multiple interesting ideas some of them are indeed from the book but also some of them are completely new and obviously have been imported just you know in general films but the problem is there's so much trying to go on in the film that none of the ideas and the concepts gets time to shine it's all rushed it's like you've got this set piece which is focused on introduced and dealt with and left then you've got another set piece which is introduced dealt with and left and you've got all these elements one after another quite quickly in a very short time and yes it has a certain atmosphere about it but the problem is because of this fast and furious sort of introduction of the uh, elements as it goes on the film didn't work very well I think like, I didn't enjoy it frankly when I was walking out the cinema nobody else that I saw looked particularly impressed as well everybody just looked a bit like eh. so a bit sort of dismissal of it and frankly that's what I feel you know this film is very easy to dismiss and frankly and I don't like to say this because of what it's based on but it is easy to dismiss and I wouldn't really recommend it because it felt fairly trivial and insignificant and by the way the plot does sort of follow the books very vaguely but as I said you can't follow it too closely because it's seven books into one film and you just can't do that in a way that works frankly and the film suffers quite heavily because of it which is a great shame because this could have been something remarkable if it done more somehow with it just one of those things unfortunately and finally the last film that I watched was American Made. This stars Tom Cruise, Sarah Wright, and is directed by Doug Lyman. Now this is set between the years of 1978 and 1986, if I am remembering it correctly. Now this is basically the pre-Iran country years. I'm not going to explain what the Iran country is, but it's a big controversy to do with the American government and the CIA and you know them sponsoring things and supplying people that they really shouldn't have supplied with anyway i all about the film Tom Cruise is the total character of the film he plays a pilot who gets essentially recruited by the CIA to be a gun runner initially for them and then he smuggles other things to and from these countries as well but because he's going into these sort of countries that are also known for their drugs he ends up doing deals with the drug lords in these countries who are obviously massive criminals by themselves and he smuggles drugs back from these countries into America and it's basically the whole film is based around him flying to and from these countries and him smuggling these various different items which sometimes include some rather curious things it's extremely dangerous for him despite the fact that he's actually completely ignorant of what he's doing yes he knows it's kind of dangerous but Frankly, his character's not that intelligent, frankly, and he sort of does it in a very fairly sort of silly manner. And the film works really well because of it, because you get the impression that, yes, he knows that there's some danger, but he's not fully aware of it. You know, he's, he's dealing with these big criminals, yet to him it's not quite as significant as it actually it really is, because you know, this is on a massive scale, and yet he seems to think it's not. At least that's sort of the impression you get about him and frankly this whole film is basically it's a vehicle for Tom Cruise to do his usual thing so we, you have the big action scenes you have the quiet scenes you have um mix between them you have Tom Cruise obviously doing his big beaming smile into the camera on multiple occasions and whilst sometimes this doesn't always work with some films with this it actually really does because it is well made I mean well frankly it's a Tom Cruise film considering his ginormous paycheck of multiple tens of millions frankly most of his films are well made and the other characters do support him extremely well because frankly it is basically him and every other actor and actress in the film is just merely supporting him 
in his role. And whilst I suppose that could get annoying to some people, and indeed it even could to me whilst watching it, the film does work on its own merits because it does play on the source material of obviously the, this pre and contra era and the ideas in it really well. There are some interesting visual effects as well to do with uh, an overlay of maps and countries and things like that really well. And overall I really did enjoy this film and I would recommend it because it's just a fun, relatively simple film where you kind of have a vague idea of what could happen because it's based obviously on a Van Contra, well pre Van Contra I should say, but not exactly what you think and I greatly enjoyed it and I would recommend it if you want to watch something just fun and uh, just a nice sort of, sort of a, an amusing sort of action type film with some interesting elements on history, real life history. So I would recommend it. So with that said, that's it for all the films I watched in August. September should also be a good month. There are quite a few films coming out that I want to watch. The first of them, in fact, uh, I should have already seen by the time this video is uploaded. In fact, I'm not going to say what that is because I'll spoil the next um, movie wrap that I'm going to do. But if you have any films that you want to recommend that you think I might accidentally miss on the cinema that is actually released in the UK, by the way, then please let me know because I don't always... Um, pay attention to every film that's out and I do occasionally miss films. Now, I do try to monitor everything that's coming out but frankly I do miss things from time to time. So if there's anything you want me to um, be aware of you know, please let me know. If you've seen any of these as well please leave a comment and we can have a discussion. And that's it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.